Yo, what is up everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video with your host Ken Kukin and today we got another Destiny 2 Raid Guide for Dummies video, King's Fall Edition, Oryx. Now once again, the plate system is the most important. So there's a little bit more. So we've done, you've watched the sister's video and if you haven't, you need to go find my sister's videos and watch it, daughter's video, witch's video, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to be, this encounter just adds two, well a couple more mechanics to it, but two more enemies and a few more mechanics to it. But most of it's the same. I'm in charge of a plate. We have floaters doing floater things. So, again, what's a floater's job, Ken? The floater's job is if I get torn at plate three, my floater for plate three and plate four takes over my role, right? Until I am no longer torn, right? Or I don't have the aura. Because if I have the aura, then I can't do my other job, which will be explained in this video. I don't have the aura. And I, so I need to stay in the middle of the map. All right. Very important. So with that said, this is, uh, this video is probably going to be closer to 15 minutes. I do apologize, but let's go ahead and get this video on the way. So you run up to the, you know, front of the map <laughs> where that little orb was glowing. Um, and Oryx will spawn up. Ads are going to spawn. We're just going to kill a couple of these ads while you're killing these ads. Knights are going to spawn on your plate. So, you know, don't take too long killing the ads because. The faster you can kill the knights, the less damage they're going to do to you. For this encounter, we recommend a linear fusion with firing line, right? And then the arbalist, so you just have more DPS. Like, linear fusions are um, pretty good in most of this raid when you're doing DPS outside of the ward clip for the daughters that we like to use. So, as long as you don't miss your shots, two shots there. Now, all the, as soon as all the knights are dead on every plate, Oryx will decide wh who he wants to go bully, right? He's going to decide which plate he wants to go. One, two, three, or four. So he's going to go left or right to one of the plates. We're just waiting for him to make his move. All right. He made his move. He's going to go to plate four. Perfect. I love that he's on my side of the map for this video first. He's going to slam on the plate. Now, he is slammed on the plate. Shortly after he slams on the plate, four ogres are going to spawn one at a time in a counterclockwise fashion. So if he... Hits plate four, which is behind me, my ogre spawns first, and then it'll go counterclockwise around the map, and every plate will get an ogre. So if you're in charge of a plate at the time, your job is to kill your ogre. It spawns in this corner. Anywhere on the map, if you're at a plate, it's going to be this puddle of water where your ogre will spawn. I'm waiting for mine. I don't have, um, I'm running a healing grenade, but I probably won't next time. Um, I'll probably run worm husk if, uh... Because I can always switch to Celestial Nighthawk as we're getting set up for DPS, probably. Um, but a good grenade, a couple of Arby shots, a heavy shot, something, right? Your special weapon. Um, but you want to kill your ogre. Now, again, Bungie made this easier. The ogres kind of stand there a lot longer than they did in D1. And now I got torn. So I'm at plate three. I just got torn. Remember, once whoever starts, um, whoever jumps on the first plate to start the jumping puzzle, Right? We talked about this in the other video. As, as soon as someone jumps on th that first plate to start the jumping puzzle, a random person will be torn on the map. So, I got torn. I killed my ogre. You'll see this in a moment, because I eventually I won't be torn. A knight has spawned somewhere that will try to kill, or will try to take the bomb that my ogre spawns upon dying. So now the floater from my side has to kill my knight. Or I would have killed my knight, right? And I will show you where your knight spawns for your plate um, in a little bit. So now I got the orb. Everyone get off. We look around for whoever, you know, everyone has to get off the plates for it to reset. So if a plate's on fire red, you're in the wrong spot. All right. Boom. Here we go. Someone's already torn and it starts at my plate, plate three. Um, so we get on plate three. I'm kind of killing ads instead of looking for what plate we need to go to. I notice that it's plate one. I'm like, all right, go to plate one, you know, because the torn person... If the person on the plate's not calling it first, which normally the person that whoever's in charge of the plate will get on the plate first faster, right? Like they'll have, you know, it'll be quicker for them to get on the plate and look around. The torn person needs to be looking around to call out what plate we need to get to next. Because if I need to kill my ogre and my knight, I don't really have time to look around above all the other plates to see where we need to go. I, You know, it's at that moment that person needs to figure out what they need to do. 
Now, this is one of the new mechanics. This night has come out. The third person to run through instead of stealing the buff from the witches, you steal the buff from the knight. When this knight comes out, you're probably on the clock for about a minute. There's a like an invisible minute timer. If you have not taken this guy's thing within a minute, Oryx will have or just about be ready. To, he's going to slam on the same plate again, and then he's going to do a raid wipe mechanic. We need that shield taken from... Um, we need that shield taken from the knight by the third person that runs through the jumping puzzle, not, um, to, to keep us alive from the bombs. Oryx's raid mechanic wipe wipes us through that. It doesn't matter if you have that or not. It's the bombs that are important. So here he goes. He's going to get ready to slam. What's the bombs? When you kill your ogres, they drop void bombs. Well, what do we do with those? You stand in them, but not right away. So... To stun him from dealing the raid wipe mechanic, he's going to go slam his fist. If you look at the bottom left of the screen, it'll say Oryx is gathering darkness. Now, some people are like, yo, we'll do a countdown, three, two, one. If everyone learns to look at this little sentence right here, and then all you hear is, all right, everyone in their bombs, like, I would already be moving to get in my bomb when I read this, and everyone else should kind of, like, it, it, this is what you, this is... The countdown, there's, there, there's no timer, right? The countdown, because if someone waits for the countdown and then they take too long or they didn't hear it, right, um, you know, they will have seen this and read this and this is the time to get in. If they didn't read this, then someone's saying, all right, everyone, get in your bombs. You know, that's their cue. But to maximize, um, so what these bombs do, so you run in the bomb for a little bit, you look for the bottom left of the screen for your name to pop up that says you have detonated a bomb and then you run to the middle. Whoever has the buff needs to stand directly in the middle so both sides of the map have the same distance to run to just in case something goes wrong. What the bomb's job is to stun Oryx to give us DPS time. It stuns his, ra his raid wipe mechanic. The reason why everyone needs to detonate their bombs at about the same time is the more bombs that are um, detonated in unison... Right, I had to think of the word, so I was speaking slower. A word to use there in unison. Uh, the more time we have to deal damage. Now, I'm sure you may have seen videos where people are like, "Yo, we're gonna, we're gonna stack our bombs," and you know, uh, they would only stun them with one bomb and then detonate like twelve later on. There is a challenge for that, or a triumph, or something like that. So you would, you know, you you would watch another video or come by the live stream. I'm sure I'll have the, you know, you need help with the triumph. Come through to my live stream on Twitch. Link in the description below. Now, after we've done DPS, two make one of two mechanics are going to happen. It, knights are going to spawn on the plate, which is what's happening, or Oryx is going to summon a bubble dome where he's at and tell us teleport us in one by one. If the knights spawn, if you're in charge of a plate, run around your plate. Don't worry about the knight on top of your plate. Just try not to die to the knight on top of your plate. I'm going to try to kill mine as I'm running around. But ideally, you you know, you just want to run around your plate. The floaters either run up and down, like the sidewalk in the middle, to the middle, and then turn back to not overlap someone. I'm over here. I'm over here trolling my teammate. I was going to try and <laughs> scare him with an explosion. But it's so you don't overlap. Because when the knights are out, as you're running, little... Um, little orbs are spawning behind you, right? And if you stand in them, it'll explode and deal damage. Either one shot you, or it takes two to kill you. And if the knights are out there shooting you, if you've taken any damage, or, you know, you get exploded on and then get shot by the knight, you're dead, right? So now you've, you've died and, you know, well, we only have so many uh, revive tokens, right? So you would run around your plates. That's so we have the plate runners run around their plates and the the floaters run either up and down the sidewalk or they run at the outskirts where all those taken guys are spawning. And I'm going to show you where your knights spawn in a minute. Um so it's starting at my plate. I jump on do not jump on the plate until it's green. If you jump on too soon, it'll turn red. You have to jump off and jump back on. So my ogre spawns last because I jumped on my plate first. So I'm not torn. Thank goodness. Someone's going to come to me. I call a, hey, plate one, get on your plate. The taken person's running over to me. Um, I'm going to help team shoot this guy's ogre. Now, as soon as it's dead, I assume I look. Here's my ogre. I pull out my special because I want to kill it. And then my knight, this is their knight. Their knight spawns by me, 
right? Your teammate's knight, so to speak, spawns by you, but your knight will spawn across at your teammate's plate. Now, for this side of the map, they spawn in those back corners for the other side. It's like right behind the plate. You can see their heads, but you don't see all of them because it's like right behind their plate hidden. Again, you want to kill those knights. If those knights live, they will go around eating bombs. I think they eat more than one bomb, too. And what do the bombs do? They stun the boss so we can actually deal DPS. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit on because this is just a rinse and repeat method once again. Floaters need to know what the plate runners do because eventually a floater is going to have to take care of a plate if they're floating for that side of the map. Again, the floater is just in case plates one or two get taken, the floater will for that plate one and two would take over their role, jumping on the plate if needed, killing the ogre if needed, killing the knight if needed. Um, if you're a floater and you don't have to worry about your side, you should still just be kind of like <clears throat> taking care of your side, helping the team shoot with ogre kill the knights and if someone calls out hey i need help on the other side right and you know because the other side's floater is busy you would kind of you know like run to that side of the map deal with the ogre and the knight or one or the other and then get back to your job right and now we're going to detonate the bombs let's go ahead and see if we get a battle dome so we're de dealing dps it is the knights again so we're going to run in circles oh my gosh i almost messed up and die oh my gosh oh my gosh what is going on <laughs> Boost! I swear to God, boost! <laughs> get off my side of the map. <laughs> and this is because I'm not running. Like this is what I get for not running a, around my plate. Like I almost die. So you see it right there. And again, you don't want to really deal with your knight until after the explosion stop, um, because you could get caught and die. Right? And an unnecessary death could, you know, end up with a raid wipe. So, oh, here we go, jumping around. Is this me grabbing the? Uh... No. Okay, I'm not grabbing it. All right, and then let's go ahead and get the final stand. That's my fast forwarding music. All right, we're at final stand. So Oryx goes back to the front of the room. Two ogres will spawn at plates three and four. So one will spawn here, and I'm like, hey, guys, primary's out. Let's team shoot this ogre because there's nothing else for you to do. Turn to the left, team shoot this ogre. There's nothing left for you to do. Now, my team designates two people to do the bombs. When I'm running with boosticles, it's usually me and boost. I'll take care of the right bomb. He'll take care of the left bomb for detonation. Um, but we all team shoot the ogres. If one of us has the, the aura that keeps us alive, then we, we say if one of us is, you know, has the aura, you will take care of whatever bomb we need taken care of, right? And it's the same thing. You wait for Oryx to call upon the darkness while well, I'm going left. I lied to you. Um, boom, we get in the bombs. Now you can detonate one at a time. Instead, when Oryx calls upon the darkness, you can have one person detonate one bomb and stun him. And then, uh, you can, uh, get into the bubble and deal DPS, but we just do two at a time. The more bombs that detonate at the same time, the longer the stun phase, two bombs at the same time is fine. Uh, you want to drop the well, not outside of the aura. Cause as you, as you can see, we had a well down, but it was broken by Oryx, right? And then you just keep DPSing, you DPS, you, you shoot them until you are actually dead, you shoot. And with that, um, you've completed the raid. Uh, a lot of supers aren't even used for DPS on this raid. A lot of it comes down to weapons, which, you know, um, so mechanically speaking, you can use whatever super you want. You can generate orbs for well users if you're running a, a not a well, right? You can use your super to kill ads and generate orbs for the well users, especially if you only have one well user to make sure they always have their well. Um, and that's it for the raid. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a thumbs up on the video. Comment in the comment section below if you have any questions, uh, concerns. Um, and come over to the live stream. Again, said it in every video. I'm, I'm, I'm probably live streaming seven days of the week. Uh, six of them are always on Destiny doing raid helps right now until Trials comes back. And when Trials comes back, I'll be doing Trials help and raids help. And I'll probably do GMs this season because, um, you know, I'm enjoying more PvE for whatever reason. Weird. So thanks so much for watching. Super appreciate it. Enjoy the video. Come get the loot. And I'll see you guys soon. Later.